Okay, this is a 32 years old boy who presented with shortness of breath and there was a murmur that was auscultated. So the ECG that was done showed some findings and now we need to decipher these findings. These findings are occasionally seen and are not looked carefully at. So today we will be discussing these findings. So let's start. First of all, we need to start with very obvious finding and that is in the chest leads v1 and v2 what we can see in these leads are that there is a tall r wave in v1 so we can see that usually the r wave is not that tall enough in v1 now there are some causes which can be both physiological as well as pathological so is this some pathology going on we need to look at some other findings as well this is a very important finding now p pulmonale we can clearly see the zoom in view of the long lead 2 and this lead shows that the p wave is so huge and look at the qrs complex comparative to this qrs complex the p wave looks quite bigger now for the definition the p pulmonale has to be 2.5 millimeters and obviously we can see that this is much more than that so we do not need to miss this findings as this is a very important finding and this correlates and signify that something is involving the right side of the heart so we need to identify the other findings that can involve the right side of the heart there is a right axis deviation so this is the lead one and we can see that this is more negative so there is a right axis deviation so whenever there is a kind of effect on the right ventricle either its pressure overload or volume overload there is some change in the vectors and because the right side of the heart is involved so there is usually a right axis deviation in such cases going further now this is a finding that is not commonly seen and looked for and this should be kept in mind whenever we are suspecting some right heart pathology such as in this case so there should be a deep s wave in lead v5 or v6 now for the normal ecg there should not be a deep s wave as of this one so we can clearly see that these are very big deep s waves and now let's compare these findings with the normal ecg which is given downwards so look at the transition in the chest leads from v1 to v6 so in v1 there is a very small r wave and now look this is our ecg there is a very big r wave second is look at v5 and v6 there is very small or almost no s wave in these leads and compared to that look at these leads so these are pretty much deeper so for a normal transition the r wave becomes bigger from v1 to v6 and the s wave becomes smaller and almost negligible in v5 to v6 but in this case there was a tall r wave and there was not such a big r wave in v6 but the s wave you can see that there is not a deep R wave, S wave in V1, but there is a deep S wave in V6. And we can also see that the P waves compared to this QRS complex is small. And look at this, this QRS complex in P wave ratio. And there is no right axis deviation in this leads. And we can see that obviously over here. So combining in all these findings we can surely say that something is involving the right side of the heart and now what this ecg depicts is 
is the right ventricular hypertrophy. So now this is a diagnosis that is occasionally seen and we should be knowing about its parameters which I have highlighted in summary form over here as well. So we need to identify these features so that we can evaluate the right side of the heart and the pathology that might be affecting the right ventricle specially. Now one caveat for this ECG is that the QRS duration, although it looks like a bundle branch block, we can also see an RSR pattern over here or atypical right bundle branch block pattern over here. But the duration of that is less than 120 milliseconds. So the criteria for the right bundle branch does not apply over here. And we should not confuse that with the right bundle branch block. Again, a deep S wave should be there in V5 and V6 and it can be more than 7 millimeter deep or the RS ratio should be less than 1. So either there should be 7 millimeter deep or the RS ratio should be less than 1 means S is more deeper than the R wave. For the lead V1 the R wave should be dominant and ideally it should be more than 7 millimeter tall or the RS ratio should be more than 1 which is which all of these criteria and being met in this ECG and hence this was the ECG of a patient who had pathology of the right heart and was having right ventricular hypertrophy.